Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and this is a handover of the 2019 Eldis Prestige 196. So, as we walk around the vehicle on the driver's side first, this is where your mains connectivity point is, and then behind this locker. So, you use your tri mark key, which is your blade key. In here, you can turn it and open it. And in there, you've got your leisure battery. You've got your mains connectivity point which you'd get your hooker blade, lift the collar and slide on. And then underneath, you've got a three pin socket. So if you want an external socket, put an extension into there, put it through the groove with the hooker wire, then you can lock this locker and you can put it underneath the van so you've got power on your own inside. And then you do have your cassette toilet so again opens with the same key ensure that the blade is closed on the bottom bowl of the toilet from inside which i'll show you when i'm doing the inside of the vehicle you'll be able to lift and slide it out got a handle there so you can drag it to your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your showering toilet block and then the empty you want to remove this grey cap Tip it at 90 degrees and press the button and tip out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so if you put some water in via the spout, put the cap on, give it a shake and tip out again. Then if you're using the liquid form of chemical, which is either the blue or the green, a cap full, this is a measuring stick, so you can get 120 mil in there, into here, it's good to go back near the vehicle. Or if you're using the tablet form, you put the cassette in dry, Open the blade, press the flush, pump a pint of fresh water into the cassette and then follow by one tablet which is in the cellophane of either the blue or the green tablet into here and then it's good to use. Please ask your site which tablets or chemical they prefer you to use, either the blue or the green because some sites um, tanks are now more environmentally friendly so they do advise you to use the green over the blue. Then underneath, just behind the back driver's wheel, you've got your grey tap, which is anything you've put down a plug hole goes into a, your grey holding tank and you simply drive over a grid on the way out of the side called the waste disposal point and open your grey waste. And then your blue is just your fresh water, so if you're done with fresh water, you, you want to allow some out before travelling home to be a bit lighter on fuel, or you're not using the vehicle, or you've taken on contaminated water or you're simply winterizing the vehicle and you want to allow all the water out you just open and allow this to drain it's very important in the winter you leave these two points open and then here this is your, your flue for your water heater above you've got your water intake so one of these keys does the water one of these keys does the habitation door it's a lockable cap push it in and turn I'd go and buy a hose pipe doesn't matter if it's a collapsible one which folds into a nice little bag or a normal hose pipe as long as it hasn't been used in the garden you'll want some hose ends and you simply put the end in there wait until it overflows which you means you've got a full tank or until you're happy you've got enough water on board but you will need connections with the hose as it's mainly just a brass tap on most campsites External shower point, so this comes out, you give it a wiggle to get it to come out, and you'd simply put your fitting into there. And it's a cold water fed shower only, so it's good if you've had the kids on the beach or the dogs. You'd simply put your fitting into there, ensure the pump's on inside the vehicle, and you'll be able to use the fresh water, cold water, to clean the dogs off the boots, the bikes, or your shoes. Around the back, you've got your high level brake light and reverse camera, and then you've got your yeah, four bike rack being fitted to this previously. So, you've got four bike arms which go through the crossbars to so first, second, third, and fourth bike. And then, what you want to do is put your bike wheels on here, these through the spokes to tie the wheels down onto the rails. And then, I would advise putting some sort of security around the bikes, i.e., your bike lock 
because if you stop at motor home, uh, motorway services or you've just pulled over for a rest you don't want your bikes to go walkabouts so put a lock around them to keep them safe on the passenger side at the back you've got your LPG liquid petroleum gas you can fit two six kilogram bottles in there and again all your lockers open with the Trimark key so at the moment we've got our little test bottle on here so to connect the bottle it's opposite threads with it being gas so it's left to tighten right to loosen so with this particular pigtail you don't need a spanner so just hand tighten turn on and off at the top of the bottle but you always advise that you turn it off when you do start to travel and always ensure that the bottle is securely strapped in by the straps provided and then you can get like I said two so you can carry a spare six kilogram bottle in there You've got your external gas point, so this is great for a barbecue or an awning heater. So you'll need a ga gas spigot to pop into there, some gas hose, some jubilee clips to clip it all together to form your gas pipe to your Kadak or your ex external awning heater. And then you just turn it on and it will run off the bottles on board instead of you carrying a spare. You've got your two fridge vents. You've got a little flue there for your space heater. You've got your microwave vents, so they just allow the heat from behind the microwave out. And then here, you have some storage. So you can store your hub leads, your leveling ramps, your deck chairs, and everything else that you need in here. On the passenger door, you've got your diesel filler, which opens with the main Peugeot ignition key. And then below you've got your AdBlue, because it's a new style diesel engine, it's got the AdBlue system on. And it's a 19 litre tank, you can buy this from pe uh, most petal four courts, or from on the pump or in the drums. And what you can do is as soon as the light comes on between the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge, top it up. Otherwise the vehicle will go into limp mode, which means it's a 50 mile an hour max speed. And if it goes completely dry of AdBlue, you will need to get Peugeot out to use a computer to restart the vehicle once the blue has been topped up so when the light comes on if you just top it up as soon as possible this is just a warning to top it up and then on the passenger doors you've got your tyre pressure so you've got five bar on the front which is 72.3 psi five and a half bar on the back which is 79.5 psi your tool kit is underneath the passenger seat which has a jackknife brace and a torn eye in everything you need to change the spare wheel and then your engine battery is underneath this compartment here so if you ever need to get it out you've got to lift the floor up in the cab and your bonnet release is on the passenger side of the dashboard underneath the bonnet you've got all your fluids to the left so you've got your screen wash this cover lifts off and you've got your power steering and radiator coolant brake fluid then you've got your oil filler and oil dipsticks for checking your levels you've got your paint code for the blank or white which is 210 you've got an earth here for giving or receiving a jump start and if you just put your key or a screwdriver in here and just lift this little cover up behind the passenger headlight you've got your positive there for giving or receiving a jump start this is the weird plate you want to go off now so Erwinheimer Group Eldis You've got your chassis number on there and you've got your build number on the bottom so if you ever need parts it's a build number you'd want to give so we can know that the part is right for this vehicle but you'll also notice you've got three and a half ton gross vehicle weight five and a half ton train weight so this is a vehicle and whatever you're towing so behind the vehicle you've got two ton of trailer car or caravan or whatever you're going to put on the back to tow then you've got your front and back axle weights so once inside the vehicle Round here you've got all your controls. So first of all you've got your 12 volt panel. So obviously if you're hooked up you will have 240 volt. So you've got your master switch which is the bottom button here. Which either turns on the 12 volt or the 240 volt if you're hooked up. And then to the side you've got your tank heaters. So if it's going to be cold and potentially freeze overnight turn these on. We'll put some current through the water and stop the water from freezing. You've got your awning which is your light above the habitation door. Then you've got your main switch above the awning, which is your lights, which are all then individually switched around the vehicle. 
and above the tank heater button you've got your pump so should you be using taps toilet external shower turn this on obviously make sure there's enough water in first don't put it on if there's no water on and you'll be able to, to prime your water above on here at the top it tells you the volt of your leisure battery then you've got a, a toggle switch here which says water and then tells you how much water is on board so at the moment we've got a full tank of fresh water on board as we can see from the top below you've got your wheel heating and hot water system so at the top here the top button you've got your water heater and at the bottom in the left hand corner you've got your heating so the both on off you can then scroll through which source you want so you've got one wiggly line which is one kilowatt of electric two wiggly lines which is two kilowatts of electric which you'd use if you were on site as you've paid for your electric and you'll not want to waste your gas or you can have the gas flame on its own if you're wild camping and not hooked up or you can have gas and two kilowatts of electric should you be in, using the vehicle in the winter and you're in desperate need of hot water or heating and then below you've got exactly the same for the heating so one wiggly line of 240 volt, two wiggly lines of electric, three wiggly lines which is three kilowatts of electric, gas on its own and gas in two kilowatts which would heat the vehicle up far quicker as it's using both sources. We've got a plus and a minus here for the temperature so full temperature is 30 degrees and the middle is about 15 then should you ever get a warning triangle down the side whatever's failed you'd press say it was the heating that's failed you press the heating button and the plus button together and once that exclamation mark removes itself you can then reset the boiler but what you need to do is always turn it off properly so once you've had it on if you turn it to off wait till the fans fall silent and then you can turn your master switch off or start your engine failing to do so will trip the boiler out so you will get the exclamation marks and you will have to reset your control panel in the kitchen area you've got three gas rings and one electric hot plate on 240 volt only so that will come up on the front here and it will illuminate that red light there and then you just use the igniter on the front to light your gas appliances and there you have three lit ga gas rings <laughs> allow them to cool before you put the glass lid down and then below, you do have your grill and grill pan. And then you do have your oven. You may want to wrap your oven shelves and grill pan up when traveling or take them out as they can cause a bit of rattling when on the road when not wrapped up. Underneath here you do have your gas isolation taps, any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe This is mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced And you do have your plug which isolates the electric hot plate should it be Should it fail at any point and you want to isolate it Storage drawer so push the buttons in and out obviously push them in locks it when traveling and then you've got a handy storage cupboard underneath your Dometic fridge so it's a three-way fridge so it's off at the top go down to the hookup which is mains 240 volt when you hooked up on site or at home pre-chill in the fridge go down to the battery when you're driving but it has to be pre-chilled before that and it'll get a feed from the engine alternator so you're shopping it'll stay nice and cool because it's been and um, pre-chilled and then when you drive it'll just turn into a massive cool box and it'll keep it nice and fresh it'll just keep it at that steady temperature and then should you be going to a site that doesn't have electric hook up it would be gas so you turn down to the gas flame at the bottom and then you'd use this here so this is your temperature so you turn it the, the max push it in push your spark igniter in and then this orange band will start making its way into the green once it starts getting a feed of gas I'd always recommend if you've had the gas off lighting the hob first as this brings the gas through the pipe work and then you, all your other appliances should light so if you're having a problem light your hobs first I 
and as you can see there it's on its way into the green keep it held down until it goes into the green then you can let go and that's lit on gas we also recommend that in the winter months you take everything out your fridge clean it out and then there's a little toggle on the end of the light here push it in and these two pins will come out and it stops the door from locking on itself so air ventilation gets in and out the fridge so you shouldn't come back to a mouldy fridge when you're ready to use the vehicle and then above you've got your taps so as long as the pump's on they have pressurised water turn it to the hot there you've had the hot water on and that water's lovely and warm there as you can see the steam coming off it your microwave above is a mains microwave so you've got to be hooked up for this to work this is an 800 watt microwave and then in this cupboard here you have the isolation plug for the microwave so should it ever fail and you need to replace it you can just unplug it and lift it out and then on this side you've got your cups and your plate rack in the washroom area so to operate your toilet make sure the pump's on and you'll be able to press the blue button on the top of the toilet there for your flush Flush your toilet first which lubricates the blade and keeps the blade from sticking and the seal from becoming brittle. And then slide this grey lever to the right. Use the toilet with the blade open so everything goes into the cassette. Then flush after use and then slide this back to the left which isolates the cassette. Then should you want to get it out to empty it, you can do. But there is a, you get a light on here so a couple of lights when the cassette is ready to change underneath the diagram of the cassette there. Get your shower screen which comes round to cover the toilet from getting wet when showering in the vehicle. Toilet cabinet. When winterizing we always recommend that you take your shower head off and put the hose in the shower tray as you can see there it's standing up with the loop in. Any water could potentially freeze in there. Leave all the mixer taps open so throughout the vehicle. So shower hand basin, kitchen tap, just to stop any air locks forming. Your plug is a push plug, and then above you do have a skylight with a blackout blind on for an, on an evening, but you can open it whichever side you want, you can tilt it back and forth, so you can have it open depending on which way the wind's blowing. You can have it. So if it's blowing from the back, you can have it this way, or you can have it that way and have one side down and one side up it's up to you just in case you want some ventilation after you've used the shower in the vehicle underneath the back bench seat behind your fridge this is your drain down for your boiler so your boiler holds 10 litres of hot water at any one time it's very important that you drain off the water container on the boiler so what you need to do is when it's across the vehicle, it's holding water, pointing to the front, pointing to the cab. The 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the chassis, so you'll see 10 litres of water just pooling out underneath the vehicle. Come in with no pump and allow it out. And then this will leave it open so that it doesn't freeze and becomes frost damage. Because if it does, it's not covered under warranty and it's very expensive to replace. When you do come to reuse the vehicle, shut this, shut all the taps within the vehicle, shut the two taps outside the waste and the fresh, fill with fresh water, come in, put the main panel on, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatic cold water, go to the hot side. This is when it will start feeding from the main fresh water tank underneath the vehicle into the boiler and filling the 10 litre water container in the boiler. So it'll cough, split, splutter all through the vehicle until it is full and you get a pressurised flow on one tap, then you would do them all. And then at the back of it, you do have a red reset button, so if you get a red exclamation mark next to the water heater, come here, press the button down for about three to four seconds. This will reset the water heater and then you can put it back on to whichever source you want on the main wheel control panel next to the habitation door. So to make the bed you simply lift and slide the lats into the middle, slide them in,
into the middle, use the back rests. Into the space there, so you put one back rest and do the other the same the other side. It's quite a tight squeeze with the cushions, but that's what you want it to be. And there you have a large double bed. To operate your drop-down electric bed, make sure the key's in the horizontal position. Make sure your lights are turned on as well as this is fed off the main light panel. And there you have your bed down. You can put the ladder on there and it stops here so you can form underneath as a bed which I'll show you in a moment. You've got nets which clip on it here so if you're going to put children in. Put a light switch over there and a main master three pin plug. And then press and hold, don't click click, just press and hold and it'll go all the way back up. There is a fuse for this bed which is just located behind this panel here. So you need two screwdrivers to take that off and there's a fuse in there. But if you lose 12 volt and your leisure battery dies when you're while camping and you're not hooked up and you've got the bed up or down and you need it out the way you can use this handle which goes through the bottom here and onto the nut there and you can wind it manually as this is the fail safe for the electric drop down bed underneath your travelling seats the back you do have your mains consumer unit so you've got all your trips on mains 240 volt you've got all your 12 volt fuses which are listed what they do so it would be a good idea to carry some spares and then below you'll notice there's a little rocker switch as this is fitted with the winter pack which is the tank heaters so it puts current through the water to stop the water from freezing when it's going to potentially freeze overnight so you can turn that on and off if it's going to freeze overnight to stop the water from freezing in the fresh water in the wastewater tanks so now in the cab to the right of the driver you have your handbrake then on the doors you've got your electric windows and electric mirror adjustments you've got two adjustments on each mirror so you've got the top and the blind spot and then to black the doors out on an evening you just pinch slide along you've got your MS car blinds but you do have the curtain as well this is more of a thermal insulation curtain for the winter months and then on the windscreen you've got so you'll have to remove your sat nav and the whole holder and then that just magnetic them so that will black the windscreen out and then just store away like so. Down here you've got your headlight adjustment and rear fog lights. You've got your trip computer, so it tells you your average consumption, your range, your traveling times, your distance traveled and so on, all through there, through the screen here. Lights and indicators. And then at the bottom here you've got off in the middle, up for cruise control which brings on the green light you get your desired speed and push up should you want to go any faster you can push up from here on the stalk or you can slow it down and if you cancel it with a foot brake or here you can resume it as well so it'll go at the last speed that was set at before the engine was turned off or below you can have a speed limiter so you can limit the speed so if you go up slowly it'll go up in ones, press and hold it'll go up in fives so you don't go over the speed limit but the vehicle does have a kick down function so if you go for the accelerator push the accelerator further to the floor it will override the speed limiter to stop any collisions from happening should you need to get out of a situation volume mute hands free this will scroll through your radio tracks and your media so That'll do all that. You've got ASR off, which is another word for anti-slip relief, so it's just traction control to turn it off. Hazards, 
locks the cab doors and you've got your heated mirrors USB and 12 volt for charging purposes only you've got a USB and an auxiliary here for the radio input and then coming up here you've got your temperature on the outside ring so the fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work which is this button here and then you've got your distribution so where you want the air to go to face feet screen and whether you're bringing fresh air in the vehicle or you're recirculating the air that's already in there fm am and dab radio so you can press one to six to save your favorite channels media of course is either bluetooth audio aux or usb then to connect the phone you just press phone connect the phone enter add phone you want to find my car on your device make sure the pins match press pair then it'll ask you if you want to allow your contacts to be saved press allow and then that is your phone book downloaded into here and your phone paired glove box here and heated and cooled glove box at the top there so if you've got any chocolate or sweets or little bottles of water put them in there it'll save you getting up from the fridge when you're traveling and stopping as long as the aircon's on that'll keep them lovely and cool and then you do have your rear view camera so that's on permanently no matter if you're in first or sixth and then obviously in reverse this this vehicle's been fitted, fitted with parking sensors so when you go into reverse you'll hear the little beep the little speakers just on the back of that bed there and it'll help you when reversing but you do have this camera on all the time as well